for speaker and I beg to reply to the motion on the general debate on the proposal to consider the constitutional amendments and our own standing order as honorable speaker. And honorable speaker, as you did mention, we have indeed interacted with this motion for the better part of this session and indeed even went ahead to amend the standing orders and that is why in the last three weeks we have been able to have cabinet secretaries in plenary and this is part of the issues that we are, were in this particular motion honorable speaker honorable speaker i'm also aware and i had an engagement this morning with the cabinet secretary aisha jumwa the former member of parliament for malindi on the question of the two-thirds gender rule and i am aware that all our women parliamentarians have been keenly following this debate and indeed following the work that is also going on elsewhere in the executive and with uh, parts of our civil society and i did attend a forum by <clears throat> our uh, women parliamentarians at radisson blue hotel sometime last month or last month but one honorable speaker on this question of the two-thirds gender rule therefore honorable speaker as much as we did even establish the ad hoc committee i want to plead with those members under the chairmanship uh, of honorable chap konga and uh, the other leaders in the Senate to ensure that you now embark on the real work of ensuring that the two-thirds gender rule uh, question is now resolved and um, uh, constitutionally and also the issue of the uh, creation of the office of the leader of official opposition and indeed honorable speaker as the honorable John Buddy has said as you have said it is time that we got good and uh, courageous leadership in the house leadership that will not abrogate their responsibilities by walking out of the house we need leaders who will be able to lead the opposition and the minority side whether they are outside the house or inside the house and that's why i strongly support this proposal to create the office of the leader of official opposition honorable speaker because this gives the country an opportunity to hear those alternative policies and ideas that uh, could be alternatives to the government that is in office at any particular time. And Honorable Speaker, as many members said when they were contributing to this debate, the office of the leader of official opposition is not being created for any particular individual. This is an office that is being created for posterity to deepen and enhance our democracy, Honorable Speaker. And I want to appeal to the ad hoc committee uh, members here and those in the Senate to indeed work with utmost speed to ensure that we get constitutional amendment bills before the House uh, when we resume for the next session of this, uh, the next uh, part of this session, Honorable Speaker, of this 13th Assembly, Honorable Sp uh, Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as I did mention, the question of the two-thirds gender rule, Honorable Speaker, is something that we have tried over the years and fail almost close to four times. I want to believe, Honorable Speaker, now with the goodwill that I listen to as all members contributed, both here in the Senate, Honorable Speaker, that we will see the realization or the actualization of this two-thirds gender rule in this 13th Assembly. Honorable Speaker, on the question of NGCDF, I know, Honorable Speaker, and I'm aware that uh, there are still court cases before our judiciary. And even as those go on, Honorable Speaker, it is important that we entrench our NGCDF funds in the Constitution so that in future, neither the GAF, the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, NGCDF, or even the proposed Senate Oversight Fund will ever be challenged in court on the basis of their, those funds being unconstitutional. Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, let me just join what the Speaker was saying in imploring on all of us as leaders that as much as we want to create other offices like that of the uh, leader of official opposition, Honorable Speaker, and in line with what the Honorable Speaker has done in his ruling, asking on the, our minority side to put their house in order, and even our old party jubilee, that even those of us who have, uh, serve now in the minority and enjoy that rare privilege of leading those in the minority and congratulate many of these members in the minority who never followed their leadership in staging a walkout. Honorable Speaker, as the Speaker and as Honorable John Badia said, let us lead from the front. 
let us come to this house because we are paid, Honorable Speaker, by our constituents. Even those of us who are leaders, we enjoy a responsibility allowance as leaders to lead the rest of the teams, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, there is no time I will ever walk out of this chamber because I do not agree either with the speaker or with a colleague in the minority. And even some of the issues that have been raised, for instance, by the Honorable uh, Member for, not Rarieda, uh, the Honorable Member, what's her name, uh, that lady? I've forgotten her name, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Lydia and Gogo, Honorable Speaker. There's absolutely nothing with a member mentioning the Honorable Zamzam by name. My name is mentioned in this house every now and then. Every member of parliament from the minority who wants to make their name out there, in their speech, they must mention the name of Kemani Ishongwa or the leader of majority. And I allow them, and I don't get emotional about it. I bear a lot of insults from the minority, and I take it in my stride. I want to implore on the leadership in the minority to also have the patience and the emotional intelligence to be able to deal with both the membership that they are leading and even the membership on the side that I lead. And we exercise patience and that emotional intelligence to be able to decipher what is for this floor, what is for out there in the rallies, what is for the streets, and what is for uh, the, the corridors of parliament. Even as we ask that we all conduct ourselves with utmost dignity, uh, those uh, throwing of uh, barbs at the speaker are things that we, shall, we should never entertain, Honorable Speaker. So that even when we create this office of the leader of official position, we want this to be a respectable office. Whoever that leader will be, whether it is our good friend, the Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, whether it is our good friend, uh, the Honorable Raila Odinga, whether it is the Honorable John Buddy, who will take up that position of the leader of official position, leader of official position, we must, or the Honorable Kaluma, or indeed the Honorable Karoli Omondi, a seasoned businessman and a respectable leader uh, from Suba, uh, who can lead the minority. If he takes up that position, we want to be able to hold him with esteem and respect. But respect, again, is two-way. And therefore, I want to ask that if you demand respect, you must also respect others. If you uh, demand uh, to be treated well, you must also treat others well. And therefore, I want to pray that uh, as we conclude this uh, debate on this motion, as uh, I reply, Honorable Speaker, we will have time during the recess to have the ad hoc committee. The Honorable Chepkonga did inform me that they are scheduled to sit today. And uh, that is why I even uh, sought the Speaker's uh, indulgence to reorder business so that we close this debate and allow the ad hoc committee and the other interest groups that are interested in this matter to engage on